G'day and welcome to Crispy Audio. I just wanted to give you a quick run through of how I clean a record on the record cleaning machine. There's obviously differing techniques, different people have got their own preferences as to how they do it. Um, but there is one important thing that I usually say to customers and, and it's often the first time that they've heard it and I think it's, it's really important to take note of it. So let's run through a, a quick clean, we'll give a record a wash um, and I'll just talk you through it as I go. All right, I just bought this Avalanches album, so uh, let's give this a run. It's brand new. Uh, now, you might think that's a bit strange. It's a new record. It should obviously be clean, right? Uh, well, I like to wash my new records because it's a little hit and miss. Um, so when they're pressing the records, they do use an, an anti-stick wax coating on the on the machines itself and that can leave that can leave a protective coating on the record that I do find once it's cleaned will sound different and perform differently so it, it's important for me to to remove that if you've got a record cleaning machine um, so I, I do do that the other thing is uh, and I'm I'm glad this, this illustrates my example a lot of records just come in a paper sleeve and you can see that there's a lot of dust and debris here. And look, I can get maybe half of that off with my with my anti-static brush when I'm playing. Um, but really, I think you want to get it all off if if you can. So um, the first thing that I do is get rid of this. So you don't want to clean your record and then go back in um, to a dirty sleeve, especially a paper one. So I'm going to ditch that. Uh, and I've got ready, I use the Gold Ring Ecstatic sleeves. Um, they're a bit of a hybrid. They've got a paper outer um, and a plastic inner. So I've got that at the ready. Uh, now what you do is you just pop that straight on. I'm using a VPI Cyclone record cleaning machine called an MW1. Uh, this, is, this is as it comes. Just comes with a hard plastic brush. Uh, it's got a forward and reverse direction. So I start in the reverse direction. There it is. All right, now the fluid. You just, you, you get used to how much you need to use. You just want enough. You want to cover it from inner to outer groove. And you just want enough so that you've got full coverage on there. Uh, now I'm going back and forth a little bit like brushing your teeth. Uh, I'm, I'm pressing firmly, but I'm not going crazy with this. Uh, perhaps if you're on an older record, if you just bought a, a second-hand record and it's looking a bit dusty, maybe you do want to push a little harder. I'm going to go in the forwards direction now. The reason I start with reverse first is that with this particular machine and, and probably most of them as well, the suction, the vacuum is designed to work in the forwards direction. Um, you might think, well, surely it works both ways and it does, but the, the air channel in the felt is slightly offset uh, just to maximize the suction. So that's enough. Um, so forwards direction is where you want to go. Now this is the important tip that I want to give to you. I'll just turn this off before I do it. What you want to do is you, we're going to start in a particular spot and you're going to watch it dry out as it goes around. Once you get to a single revolution, you've had, a, you've had one full turn with wet felt or wet, wet velvet on the record material, which is great. As soon as you've got that felt on a dry um, vinyl, you're going to start to create uh, or induce a bit of static. Uh, and the more that you go, the more static that you're going to introduce. So the quicker you can get this off your record, the better. Uh, and if you've got a half decent machine, you only need one, one revolution. So let's have a look. So for this, that is absolutely bone dry. That is ready to play. I don't know how that's going to come through on the camera, but that is absolutely dry. I can pop that on and play it immediately. Um, I'll spin it over and give side B a wash. 
Now that's another question some people say, well, your side A was dirty, now it's clean, but your side B was dirty on the platter. Uh, and now you're putting the fresh clean side onto the platter itself. And that's, look, that's a fair comment. Um, my reply to that is, well, you know, how far can you take this? Like, you could give the platter a bit of a, a blow with a, uh, an, an air aerosol if you want to get that off or just blow it off with your breath. Um, but look, in reality, sure, you're going to pick up a little bit of that debris from the other side, but it's, it's just on the surface and that's something that you're going to be able to get off with your anti-static brush when it's on the turntable. Um, I'll still give it a run with the anti-static before I play. So that's what I say. I say don't stress. <laughs> because you can get the residual off on the turntable. If I flip that over now, look, there's one or two spots, um, but yeah, that'll come off very easily. Now that's, that is good to go. I can, oh, wrong sleeve. I can play that straight away. Um, it's dry, so I can sleeve it straight away, which is what I'll do now. And that is done. One thing I should cover is the drainage tube on these things as well. Now, this gives you a, a bit of a run. You've got probably 15 inches of runoff there. Uh, as you can see, I've probably cleaned four records um, today before starting this video. There's still nothing in here. It's, it, it may come through on the sixth or seventh and you'll just get a small amount. Now, if you're cleaning say 10 records every other day, or less than that, you may find that the fluid actually evaporates over time and you end up not having to empty this at all. If you're doing a large batch uh, and this does get quite full, you will need to drain it. You can just take your machine over to the sink uh, and just, just pop that open and then that will just drain out. Now, the one thing that you really need to remember is that you need to clamp this back. Uh, this needs to be airtight in order for the vacuum to work at its most efficient. Uh, if there's an air leak at the tube end here, you're going to get less suction at the other end, which is not obviously what you want. So do make sure that's clamped up tight. Check on this every now and then, like if over time this is worn through and it's not clamping tightly, uh, organize a replacement or do whatever you need to do to make sure that this is airtight. Uh, now, don't stress a lot with this. People think, oh, what if I haven't checked it and I've forgotten? Am I going to damage the unit? Most units will have a uh, cutoff valve internally as well. So once the liquid gets to here, uh, it's going to cut off before the liquid gets into the motor itself. Well, thanks for watching and I hope this video has been useful for you. Please subscribe for more audio tips from Crispy Audio.